Hey everyone, uh, my name is Abdul Mamun, General Manager Marketing of Victoria Institute of Technology. Um, I would like to welcome all the students who have joined and agencies uh, have particip participated to um, get this information session from VIT, uh, the colleagues and staff that were uh, just recently joined. Now, um, today um, we will cover um, our courses, offerings, scholarships, as well as the um, other student services um, and also internships, job placement, what other facilities VIT is offering for international students that we will cover today. And um, you'll also find out um, about the current situation um, in terms of the health regulations as well as the COVID control, what uh, Australia has taken um, in control over the last few months. Um, so let's start with our guest, Professor Arun Patil has been in the industry over 15 years. Uh, Alan, he will talk about- Alan has just uh, joined. Yes, thank you. Um, I will get um, Alan to start with, Alan Griffin, who is our chairman of business development uh, committee. Actually, mate, could, could, yeah, sorry. I'm, I'm in a bit of a rush because I've been caught up into some other things. Can someone else start for me? Yes, okay, else no problem, no problem. I'll get Arun. Uh, so, sorry guys, uh, I will go back again, <laughs> Arun Patil to start, who is our Dean of Engagement and Partnership of VIT. He's been in the industry over 15 to 20 years. Um, so, Arun will talk about today um, our, uh, the, the student services, student experience, um, job placement, internships, and so forth, and what you will expect from a course at VIT. So I will uh, call upon Mr. Arun Patul to talk about and cover that. Thank you, Arun. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Mamun, um, and welcome everybody. Namaste, happy Diwali to all of you. Um, um, I will just briefly um, touch upon our courses, our programs. Um, uh, Mamun is going to have a detailed um, description of those programs in his session um, after some time. Uh, but um, we have a range of programs at VIT um, from English language to uh, masters, okay? Uh, we have um, vocational education and training programs, highly popular uh, weight programs, um, ranging from again, hospitality and, and so on. In higher education, we have two I would say uh, most promising, uh, popular, uh, and um, the programs highly in demand. One is at bachelor's level, Bachelor of Information Technology and Systems, and three years program. The other one is Master of Information Technology Systems, master's program, two years program. And Mamun will give details about these programs, about eligibility, uh, entry requirements, et cetera. Um, I, what I want to tell you, um, what is the difference, you know, what in, in comparison to, to other private providers, uh, programs elsewhere, uh, how we stand out in terms of uh, our own identity, uh, our own uniqueness, and, and so on. The first thing, um, all our programs, uh, as, as uh, you must have uh, seen that, you must have browsed that, all our programs are internationally recognized Australian qualification. So these, these, the qualifications, whether it is bachelor's, bits qualification or degree, or it's a master's, uh, mits, or even MBA, we have great MBA program. All, all these qualifications are internationally recognized Australian qualification. So you achieve, if you gain MBA degree from VIT, or if you gain master's degree from VIT, it will be recognized anywhere in the world. Um, because it, it is recognized and, and, and um, regulated by TEXA and, and, and on other uh, regulatory organizations or bodies. The second thing, um, in spite of this challenging situation, uh, we have de delivery, we have digital delivery, but we have engaged digital delivery. So as you know that um, many of the universities uh, and institutions even in India right now, uh, for last few months, they are delivering their programs online by distance mode. But um, that online learning can be extremely boring, extremely unengaged, um, and students are a bit concerned about their learning journey, concerned about 
their achievements and definitely they are concerned about their outcomes. However, at VIT, we have engaged digital delivery, although it is in a digital form, but we made sure that everyone, each student, irrespective of his or her location, irrespective of the program the student is enrolled in, uh, the student is engaged uh, like the students are engaged in face-to-face -face mode. Um, we are not just saying this, but we asked our students, we collected their feedback, we analyzed that feedback, and we received some qualitative comments by our students also. So students are extremely happy. Students said that in spite of these challenging situations, the challenging conditions, restrictions, etc., cetera, um, we are a bit initially worried about online de delivery or digital delivery, but at the end, when we look back at our semester, when we look back at our learning journey for last few months, it was extremely good. And we are happy that there is no difference, though the learning was very similar to what we learned in face-to-face -face mode. And we have achieved same ex student experience. So this is just one thing what I'm telling that why VIT is different, because everybody's struggling, you know, when, when the, the providers or institutions are struggling to cope up with this new, complete new horizon um, or paradigm shift of, of teaching and learning, we are very much confident. And we did it, you know, from week one, you know, or, or day one when, when the changes uh, have been imposed. And, and, and we took students into confidence uh, and our faculties and students, you know, they are very much happy about the, the delivery. So this is one thing um, on, on all other aspects, you know, we have great support system here. Now, when I'm saying that students have great experience, they're very positive, they're very happy when they look back at their semester because even, even in spite of this, this um, social isolations, um, or, or in spite of this social distancing, students, um, you know, situated or students located far away from our VIT campuses or their own labs or their own classrooms um, or their, uh, you know, offices of their faculties and facilitators, they still looked after very well by our support system. So we have very strong support system. Um, when, and right from the, the academic support, the support for assessments, support in terms of libraries because students need support in, in, in varieties of ways um, to, to, to support such as uh, when students are really isolated, they feel homesick or they need some support in terms of counseling. So we have wonderful team of uh, welfare counselors for students. They talk to students, they, con they are in touch with them. Uh, they always you know, make sure that students don't feel that they are isolated, don't feel they're lonely. And that is, I think, big positive. Once you have that clear mind, I'm sure that students like, like you or students, any student would have more engagement and students can focus um, you know, in, in, in their learning. Um, in terms of their financial struggle also, Mamun will tell more about this, but there also we helped a lot. Um, when it comes to in the, the teaching and learning, the, the major hurdle or the major concern of any student is assessment. Okay, how am I going to get good marks? How am I going to get um, A plus or 90 plus? And I, how am I going to complete my degree um, with, with high flyers? Okay, and that is where students concern. And that is where we provide a lot of support. We, we organize many, many sessions for students in terms of explaining them about assessments and so on. Not only that, the, the, the assessments we conducted during this challenging situation because it was not a standard examination we could conduct in face-to-face -face mode, but we had to uh, you know, mold to the new system using our technologies. And that is where students even are very much happy. The students said that, wow, this is fantastic. Even we enjoyed assessments. We, we enjoyed our final assessment. We enjoyed our examination. So, so. Uh, Arun, if I may, sorry to cut you off. If I just also, because we've got five minutes more to go yeah, yeah. for you. And also we can also uh, cover the fact about the job or um, and engaging yes. with the different yeah. internships so, program for yeah. the next five minutes. That'd be great. Sure, Thank you. Sure. Thank you. So that, you know, the reason I'm saying that because these students are our profiles and our students and we then connect them to in, with the industry. And my, my portfolio uh, is engagement and partnerships in that port within that portfolio. 
I make sure that students have that great experience of industry engagement, great experience of industry exposure, um, internships, and even placements. So we have placed students, even this COVID situation, we have placed uh, about 100 students uh, to real world uh, industry internships. And we collected feedback from our industry stakeholders also. They said the fantastic, your students are very much engaged. You know, they attended all meetings, they completed all tasks. And we asked students also, and students also, uh, you know, um, express that that part was the best part in, in their whole program. Because that is where they gain, um, you know, the employability skills, they gain opportunity to explore uh, on in industry environment. Uh, they have uh, really uh, hands-on opportunity to work with real world problems of, of Australian industry. And most importantly, they get entry into Australian industry. And when they enter into the industry, they see, wow, this is, this is how industry works. And that experience is very important for them because then when they finish degree and they face job interviews, they, they, they can tell with full confidence that I know how Australian industry operates because I have done internship program. And the data we collected and analyzed show that, uh, you know, that those students who engaged in industry projects successfully um, or they're doing uh, the internships, um, they have achieved really great uh, grades and academic achievement uh, to, to higher level in comparison to other students. Because they are the students who are motivated. They are the students who are engaged. They are the students who want to go you know, beyond just uh, you know, whatever they want to just about credit and normal teaching and learning. They want to complete an industry project where they want to show something that I have achieved. This is what I have done with the industry. And this is what my contribution. So if you, when you come to VIT, I would urge you that you should also look for this opportunity. Okay, you should see that from week one, semester one of your course, how you will engage and how you will have that great exposure with Australian industry. Because I'm sure each of you coming to us may be thinking that how am, am I going to get a job? And, and in order to get a job, what do I need to do? So the greater experience we have and the, the and students are very happy. Uh, we are li really looking forward um, to making sure that uh, welcoming you and giving that sort of exposure and handholding you as and when required. So all the best once again, and we look forward. Oh, thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Arun Patil for giving a detailed information about the students, uh, what they can expect from BIT, from our course and so forth. And also the industry engagement and partnership and the, the job opportunity, how we make them the job ready uh, the, for the students to get the gain the experience from VIT and engage in the industry. Um, so wonderful um, the information that you have shared. Uh, student, if you have any questions uh, at all, uh, please write down um, on the chat box. Uh, at the end of the session, we will take all your question and answer. And if it is related to the um, Professor Arun Patin, what uh, he has just shared, he'll be, we'll be able to get him to answer your queries. Now, uh, coming to our next topic um, from Mr. Alan Griffin, uh, he is our business development um, the manager. Um, he was our um, the uh, former um, from politician from Australian Labour Party. So um, Alan Griffin will cover uh, us uh, the information about the why Australia. Uh, why Australia is a preferred destination, as well as how Australia um, managing uh, the COVID situation over the last few months and how, what's our situation uh, compared to other uh, preferred destinations around the world where student goes to study. So I will uh, call upon Mr. Allen to cover those topics. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thanks, Mamoon. Uh, well, um, it's great to talk to you today about uh, the sort of choices you face in what is a very uncertain time. Uh, obviously, uh, if you're looking at studying overseas now, uh, there are a range of questions. And a lot of those questions relate to the pandemic and what's happening with respect to that. But also, what does that mean about the economic situation and therefore job opportunities at particular destinations? And then also, what's it going to mean for the nature of being able to conduct your study? Uh, particularly, I think there's some, there's some figures I'd like to sort of look at first up, which gives you a bit of an idea of the level of disease that's currently taking place in the main locations that you're probably considering 
as a possible de destination for study. Have we got that slide, Norman? Matt, have we got that slide with the figures? No, it was not. It's not. Oh, okay. Well, I'll just I'll just quickly go through it. I mean, usually if you're yeah. talking, if you're looking at where you might go, you're talking about the United States or the United Kingdom. Uh, or Canada or Australia. They're the main destinations if you're looking at studying in an English speaking country. Uh, just to compare what's occurring with the pandemic in respect to those particular locations. As of a couple of days ago, you've had over 10,700,000 cases in the United States and nearly 250,000 people have died. In the United Kingdom, over 1.2 million cases and over 50,000 people have died. In Canada, over 277,000 cases and over 10,500 people have died. Um, whereas in Australia, we're talking about 27, just over 27,000 cases and less than 1,000 people who have died. And particularly if you're now seeing the, um, the, the slide, if you look to the right of that slide and you see the cases per million, which gives you an idea of what the actual level of infection is in each of those countries. As you can see, in the, in the United States, you're talking over 32,000 per million, th down through 18,000 plus in the UK, 7,000 plus in Canada, and just on 1,000 in Australia. Where that's really important is that the one thing we know about the pandemic is that however bad it is now, the circumstances are it provides you with an idea of what's likely to be happening into the future. Yes, it, there's some very helpful news about um, vaccines, and yes, we're all hopeful that we're getting past the worst of this. But what we can say is that the sort of dislocation that's occurring from a health and safety point of view and economically um, is greater in countries where the level, the burden of disease is much greater. And that's certainly what you're seeing, particularly in the Northern Hemisphere as we head into that winter period. And that has implications both in terms of how universities are opening up, uh, whether they're able to actually uh, receive students uh, on shore. Um, and then on from that, uh, what's the likely economic recovery outlook, both for students who might be looking to get employment while they're studying, but also looking to stay on after they've completed their qualifications to do um, additional work in the place where they've actually gained their qualification. And as you can see, in, those circum in the situation we're dealing with now, Australia's position in relation to the pandemic is significantly better than those other locations, which means that we've got a good degree of optimism here about how well we should be able to come out of this um, and also and therefore benefit from a recovery. Uh, also, what we know is that each nation is, is, is approaching the issue of international students differently. Some countries are still allowing students to arrive, but are in fact entering into lockdowns around the question of the general operation of their society. Other countries like Australia are taking a much more cautious approach about students arriving, uh, but are also in a situation where into the future, there's a help, hopeful outlook around what might happen. One of the questions I'm often asked is when are students going to be able to come to Australia? Uh, and at this stage, we don't know. Uh, what we can say is it doesn't look like it's going to be in the first half of next year um, in any real numbers. Uh, although there are a number of, um, of um, states that are looking at small operations to develop the system around um, how they would deal with students arriving, quarantining, et cetera, et cetera. But again, depending on the rolling out of a vaccine, we're hopeful in the latter part of next year that the, that the borders will be opened and there will be potential for students to come. But in the meantime, as Professor Arun, Arun was talking about, uh, like many other providers, we've embraced online learning as being a way forward to give students the opportunity to commence their studies and actually end up in a situation where they can, when they arrive here, both be in the queue, able to come early once the borders open, but also be in a situation where they've completed some of the academic requirements. So it won't take them so long to complete their degree once they arrive. Two or three things about that. Uh, one, the Australian government has recognised the importance of things like um, giving people those opportunities. So in terms of visas, one, they've reopened out the system in terms of the granting of visas to students to be able to come to Australia, which gives people the opportunity to qualify um, and have a visa and then be ready to travel as soon as the borders are opened. Uh, two, they've also recognised the importance of, um, of uh, the 
time that you've spent studying with respect to qualifying um, for um, post-qualification work rights. And they've agreed that the time done in terms of overseas study that qualifies you to your Australian degree will count towards uh, the times with respect to post-qualification work rights. So what it does is provides an opportunity for people to actually look at um, both starting now and finding out whether they can get a visa, uh, then being in a situation where they can start commencing study and make savings on that study cost that they'd normally incur, both in terms of more reasonable fees, which Mamoon will talk about in a minute, but also in the context um, of uh, saving on the sort of living costs that they would incur if they were in fact studying overseas. Um, and then that gives them the opportunity to hit the ground running once they get here. Uh, and as Professor Arun also talked about, the fact is what we're seeing, although many students are a bit sort of qu questionable about wanting to do online study, um, our experience and that of other education providers now is that once students commence online study, we found that they're embracing it and they're achieving good academic outcomes and in the process of that moving well down the line of getting that qualification that they're so keen to achieve and which we're keen, so keen to help them with. Um, so that's why I say when we look at what the situation is now, there are opportunities there, even though there are difficult times. You can apply now. Visa um, applications are well down, which you would hope gives people the opportunity for their application to be considered quickly um, and hopefully favourably. There's an opportunity on from that then to start qualifying for units, which will then mean that you get your degree sooner and in those circumstances still benefit, benefit from things like uh, post-qualification work rights. So we'd urge you to think about those questions. In respect to Australia as a destination, as you can see from the slide that's now there, it's a very popular de destination, the third most popular study destination in the world. Uh, there's capacity for students to be able to gain employment. And as I said, because we're economically um, going, getting getting through the pandemic quicker, we're hopeful the economy will bounce back sooner. Uh, we've got a strong multicultural environment, um, a, um, a lot of good quality institutions uh, and the opportunities that are there for you to be able to gain a good education, internationally recognised, um, and through that um, find a way forward, as well as qualifying for work um, rights post um, completing your qualification. So um, I'd urge you to consider it very carefully and to look at this as being an opportunity in difficult times that actually has um, some significant benefits in a time when many people are wondering just what the world's coming to. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Thank you very much. It was uh, very information, the very informative. Um, this is what actually students and agencies looking forward to hear uh, when the border will open, how is the health system, how soon the economy will come back. So thank you very much for uh, those information. I'm sure it will help our uh, the attendees who are attended today. Um, look, um, thank you. Um, now um, I will um, cover the topic is about VIT's courses, fees, scholarships, and other um, information that are uh, relevant for students to initially uh, think through and look at before they take their decision to apply for a course at uh, uh, a destination. Um, I'll just share a screen, um, a presentation. I hope you can see the screen, right? So uh, I'll just to give you a bit of background about VIT, um, the VIT has been operating since 1998 and uh, we became an RTO since 2000. And since 2004, we have started delivering a um, program for international students start with the vocational courses. Back in 2014, VIT for the first time got approval for Bachelor of IT to deliver for our international student. And this program got approval from Texas Tertiary Education Quality Assurance Authority, which is the same regulatory body for all the universities here in Australia to deliver higher education program. Back in 17, we got our approval for Masters of IT as well as MBA. And at the same year, we also opened our new campus in Sydney. Now with Melbourne, Sydney, and as well as Adelaide, we have three campuses across Australia. Now, 
the courses that I will cover today, um, it will be all uh, higher education programs. Of course, the country uh, that we are dealing with, particularly from subcontinent, um, those where the students are really struggle to apply for vocational courses because of the visa risk and so forth. So I will talk about the, the, the courses that are in demand to just to uh, give you a background. What are the courses um, about these courses, specializations? And of course, I'll talk about the fees and other uh, scholarships as well. So the first, the program that we'll talk about from undergraduate Bachelor of IT. Uh, we are offering this program, uh, people with IT with uh, two uh, specializations. One is networking, another one is application development. Now, this program, uh, the entry requirements for English, it is uh, overall six, no less than five or equivalent. So of course, PTE and other form of English that are acceptable that of course we accept and um, it will be always uh, equivalent to six overall, overall, no less than 5.5. And of course, in terms of the academics, year 12 is a, uh, the academics that we need, including the mathematics, one of the mandatory um, the subject that we need either from year 11 or year 12. Now, um, in terms of GTE, along the way for our all the programs that we offer, I would request you to uh, look at our uh, website under agencies, uh, the registered agency that are located in your city uh, and contact them uh, to get uh, more information about our GTE and what we offer. Or alternatively, you can also email us at VIT at enroll at vit.edu.au to get more details about the other GT informations or uh, the documentation that you need to submit. So this um, is our Bachelor of IT. Um, within the Bachelor of IT that we have seen over the years, students' preference for the networking is very, very high at VIT. Of course, the demand of this uh, the specialization and here, and also the PR pathway is another reason the student opting this program. So the next uh, the program um, what would is uh, that is also very very popular that is Masters of IT. Uh, this Masters of IT actually we have designed for any discipline of the students to apply, which means the students are from commerce, accounting, science, engineering, any discipline of the students can come and uh, study our Masters of IT. It has um, sixteen subjects, and within that sixteen subjects we have. Um, uh, three specializations. One is the software engineering, architecture, and analytics. So these are the three specializations that we offer for our master's of IT. And within that, what we see is the software engineering is the most uh, popular and demanding program. Now, coming to um, entry requirements, particularly for IELTS or English, it is 6.5 overall. Um, or no less than six in each band that we expect uh, to enter into this program. However, uh, we have other alternatives. If students are from, um, you know, um, institute where their undergraduate delivered in English, and you can provide a supporting documents to state that uh, this program um, is delivered, been delivered in English medium, um, then we'll be able to take or accept a student if they have overall IELTS six and um, or equivalent they have, or PTE also is acceptable as well. So this is the, the just uh, alternative options. If you have overall 6.5 or no less than six, that is fine, no problem. But if in case, if you have overall six, MOI is an alternative option for students to apply for our master's of IT. Um, again, um, the GTE questionnaires, I would suggest, if, please, if you can just email us, I can clarify more. For example, GTE questions like you could ask, what is the um, gap of study three years or four years? Or what is the percentage of undergraduate program that I need to score? Those are the things that actually are, are very, very important topic. End of the session, you could also ask, put a, your question in your chat box. We can uh, cover as much as we could do. Uh, but one thing is that we assess an application overall merit of the application, not in a one um, segment, just for example, or if I have less overall points, what happens if I have uh, one year gap? So those kind of things, it depends on the various factors of when uh, an applications and that come to VIT, of course, um, and the case officer at uh, Delhi High Commission, that's how they assess. So it is always wise to ask us or your, uh, the agency that are uh, working in your city. Now, 
The following program I will cover today, it is, which is MBA. Our MBA with a uh, four specialization that have made it very, very popular um, in the current uh, uh, market that we see, particularly in onshore. So the specialization that we offer with uh, uh, finance and accounting, information systems, uh, the management and tourism. Um, in terms of your English requirements, it is exactly the same as our master's of IT, which is uh, overall 6.5, no less than six year or equivalent English requirements. Now, Again, if you have overall six, that is still you will um, be able to meet our English requirements as long as you offer um, or provide us evidence of your undergraduate programs being delivered in MOI, meaning of instruction English, then we can also reduce our um, English requirements as well. Now, these are the uh, higher education uh, program that are um, quite in demand particularly in subcontinent region that we see. Um, I guess if students from any cohort are particularly uh, from science and IT or management or commerce, um, they are, uh, will be able to fit any of this program that we just discussed. Now, coming to fees, it's the, uh, the topic that always uh, the students are very keen to know, uh, particularly that always ask, no matter what is the fees, they will still ask, what is the scholarships? What is the discount, okay? Uh, that is very, very common. And then I will always say to my agency previously that, you know what, I can put $3,000 more fees in publish it and I tell, come back and I'll tell you, okay, $3,000 of scholarships. And they said, it's still, a student will be happy to hear that $3,000 scholarship. Anyway, uh, the fees, um, what you see in my screen is the actual fees, um, the per semester that we charge, which is Bachelor of IT um, with a six semesters, three years degree with 8,500 per semester. Uh, and the total fees for the entire three years degree is $51,000. Now, Masters of IT is a four semesters that we offer $12,000 per semester. Um, and the total fees for two years is 48,000 and MBA exactly the same. Now, all our students has got opportunity uh, to apply and based on the student GTE and to requirements, we offer um, a scholarships um, up to 50% uh, for depending on the course that you apply. But the recently our founder of VIT, he has also announced uh, the scholarships up to 100%. But that means is if a student apply for VIT, if you apply for Bachelor of IT, which means you will get $51,000 worth of value for your course fees that will be waived for their entire course. And if you only want to apply for Masters of IT or MBA, so it will be up to $48,000, they will get uh, the scholarships. And the question is, um, how do you get it? Uh, all your applications from your territory will be assessed based on the merit, based on the highest achieving student. We will announce from the committee who will be lucky uh, person that to get that entire fees, uh, fee waiver. However, students, whoever gets it, he will get it, but it's still the rest of the students, this is what we offer. Um, as I said, based on the students' entry requirements, GTE, meeting the GTE, we offer for Bachelor of IT, 25% a scholarship, which makes from $8,500 fees, only um, $6,375. I converted um, in, uh, in Nepalese rupees, but you can convert in uh, Indian rupees. Um, I, I don't think it'll be a huge difference um, in terms of the currency, but actual fees for Bachelor of IT with the scholarships, um, 6,375, which is a significant amount of savings that you will have. Um, and that is again, for the entire course that you will have. It's not, I know that some of the providers, some of the institutes because of the COVID they offer uh, initial uh, first or semester or two uh, at some significant scholarships, but VAT is offering for the entire course. So the first semester we will offer by default if you meet our entry requirements and the subsequent semester you will need to uh, maintain that at least 50% course per grade to get that uh, same amount of scholarships to be applied for your 
uh, for subsequent course fees. Now for Masters of IT is 35%, um, 7,800 is your fees for, um, which is uh, most uh, four subjects, which means um, if you are from IT background students, your fees will be much more less than that. I would say about $5,900 top of my head. So that would be the fees for the, your uh, semester fees. And of course, over, um, uh, over the two years, it will be much more um, competitive than the actual fees that we offer $48,000. Now for MBA, which is the most um, and very, very uh, popular that we see in the recent uh, inquiries that we get from our students and agency communities, that MBA, um, we are offering 50% scholarships, um, which means that you'll be only paying $6,000 per semester. So these are the, the scholarships and fees that we offer. I believe these fees and the scholarships are very, very competitive. Um, and at the, at the same time, Arun mentioned about the fees and at the same time, the finance. VIT is actually giving opportunity for our students to um, apply for scholarships during the pandemic. And we have accepted close to 1,100 students to support with their, uh, the fees, to reduce their fees up to, um, we got about $30,000 and uh, one student got 30,000, another got 25,000, even as low as $1,000 we have accepted. So that also um, indicates or shows that VIT care about uh, our students. Um, in terms of the fees, um, that is something you will have some sort of confidence and you will see that is very, very competitive. Um, I don't see, uh, if you compare your fees, one of the high-end institute or university in, in your country, in India, um, our fees as an Australian qualification, uh, are probably you will say 20% or 25% more than what you pay. But at, at the same time, if I talk about the quality of education, um, I think we have a lot to say. To say uh, and I, I guess uh, there are some platforms where um, it says that VITs are uh, the quality of educational experience is not too far away from some of the public university in Australia, what they're offering 30% uh, or 40% more fees. So what you get, it's just not only the competitive fees, I, I believe you will be, uh, we'll be able to get a quality education from VIT. Um, th that's something that uh, in the recent past your students and graduated that they have been completed and engaged in the, in the industry. That's what they say. Now, um, I'll just um, give you a, a bit of understanding about just a, a background that we see or see in the recent past, the students' experience. When actually students um, apply for a course to study abroad, they get very, very excited and their uh, you know, anticipation is very high because they expect they will come um, and, and also they will see a good university, the non university, and when they come, usually that we see most of the students struggle to settle in because of the job, because of the accommodation, because of the homesickness, all these actually students struggles to adjust in this initial stage, which actually led students actually put in a situation where they lose a significant amount of time in the initial stage coming to a, a good university so-called, and you pay 30, 40% more, and then when you come here, you see some of the other institute in the same level, uh, they offer very, very competitive fees. And then that's when the students end up uh, switching provider. I'm sure your friends and family has been uh, already in the abroad and they are studying. And I'm, I'm sure you have heard about the switching provider is a very, very common topic and the subject. And, and yes, and that's what, once that happens, we see the students are switching provider uh, and coming to VIT that in our onshore scenario, we see students um, actually uh, close to lose um, um, almost um, um, $1.3 million, which is a 15,000 Australian dollars overall with their school tuition fees, as well as the time and as well as the, uh, the living cost and altogether. So the, what I was trying to say is your, um, subject is now to look at which program you want to do, which institute you want to go, and do not change your mind once you come in here in Australia, which is very, very important. Um, and um, other topic is, um, of course, um, the online is uh, something that are uh, very, very co uh, common and popular and uh, because of the COVID restrictions. Um, and as uh, Arun Patil 
uh, covered that it, it is very important for a student to actually, um, when they start, um, the, the difference between a face-to-face -face study or online study, what you can achieve. So one is um, you are preparing yourself and of course you are saving some significant amount of fees um, in terms of taking this advantage of these scholarships. And of course you're getting ready to come here in, in the first in a queue to come to Australia. Now, uh, these are the topics that um, I thought I would cover, but and also I thought it's important for you to hear from our um, the students who have been graduating from our institute in the recent past to see what they say about BIT. So at all, I will just run a uh, quick video of minute or two to hear from our ex-student who are currently studying or been graduated from BIT. So let me play this uh, video. Um, my name is Chisette. I am originally from the Philippines. I am currently enrolled in BIT in Master's in Information Technology. Australia is very open to uh, international students, very diverse culture. It's known globally to be one of those countries who provide uh, international students with high standards of learning. My name is Kusal Pore. I am from Nepal. I choose BIT because the program they are offering is what I am looking for. They are reputed not only for uh, classroom type of teaching, they do practical applications, they do trainings. I'm Santos, I'm originally from Nepal. I'm a recent ID graduate streaming in networking. My agent, Grace International Academic, uh, mentioned VIT about its flexible schedule and the tuition fees were affordable. So I would really recommend VIT for those students who are looking for tuition fees to be affordable while studying. Uh, my name is Simon Tab. I came from Myanmar, uh, the city of the Yango, and I'm currently doing the Master of Information Technology in VIT, specialized in software engineering. The reason I chose VIT is because VIT is very close to the public transfer and really located in the center of the city. And then they also offer me the scholarship as a bonus, and that helped me a lot for my financial support. I found uh VIT to be uh, very supportive to their students. The staff are very friendly. Also, at the same time, the facilities that they have are very well satisfied. They have laboratories, libraries. Well, what I'm really impressed by VIT is the student information system, which is really assisting all the students in a daily basis. We use an online learning management system where students retrieve all their notes from, so all lecture notes are put online. Students have access to these 24 hours a day. Uh, all student assignments and assessment are submitted online. Most of our students love studying here. We, we have a very dedicated staff. Uh, we have lots of young, enthusiastic lecturers. Uh, they're at the forefront of technology. Now, we have been operating for about 20 years. And for those 20 years, we have been um, uh, training and teaching uh, many corporate clients as well as individuals. We offer not only courses at a theoretical level, but we also offer internships and we offer projects to build the students up to start learning how to research, how to do a number of things that they would normally do in the business world as IT professionals. There's definitely a purpose why I wanted to study and pursue higher education. So I know VIT would be able to help me out with that. As early as now, I can say that the education that is being provided to us is very uh, competitive and would really help me out all through this two-year time uh, that I'm here. And I can bring that and uh, contribute a lot in my future and to work. Thank you for watching. Now, um, I will just, we will start now taking um, Q&A. I will request uh, our general manager of business development, Mr. Rohit Menini, to actually come. And if you wanted to uh, share anything, Rohit, feel free. And if you wanted to start taking the questions, uh, we will get our you know, panel to um, answer those. Uh, th thanks, Mamoon. Uh, nothing much to add. I think um, um, all, of, all of the speakers have uh, broadly covered what VIT is willing to offer. Uh, but, but like Mamun said, I'd like to focus on the question and answers uh, side of things, as well as uh, any general comments from either the agents or our students. So um, the, the floor is open. You can either type in your message or, or if anyone wants to speak, go ahead, uh, obviously one at a time. 
So um, any of our agents or any of your any of the students, if you have any questions about any of the topics that the speakers have spoken about, or any other matter as such, even in general about Australia, because we have some uh, really um, strong guests here who can answer some of those questions. So please go ahead, guys. Uh, any questions, please? I can see uh, on the box, there's one question came from, how do we maintain the scholarships? Um, so I would say that uh, when you apply for VIT, any of our higher education program, um, that will be based on your academic standing, your GTE. And of course, if you meet all these uh, requirements, VIT will offer you for Bachelor of IT 25%. Um, and for masters of IT, 35%, and if it is for MBA, it will be 50% will apply um, by default in your first semester. But the remaining semester fees will remain in full phase. However, if you maintain 50% course progress in your first semester, the second semester, the scholarship will apply again. And if you maintain 50% course progress in the second semester and third semester fees will apply. So that's how it will apply or, you know, or will be able to maintain for the entire course. So first, by default, it will be going your first semester and the subsequent semester maintaining 50% course progress. I'll just give you an example. For example, you have taken four subjects in your first semester. So what we're asking is to pass at least two subjects from out of four units. So if you pass one out of four, which means you fail three pass one, and then what will happen, you will have to pay for the full fees for the second semester. But if you pass second semester 50% out of four, you pass two, the third semester, again, you will have that particular scholarship, what we have, uh, we are offering uh, for your course. And in, in, in terms of the 100% scholarships, uh, you must maintain um, a high distinction, which is, we, we call it A. So if you maintain that 80 to 90% of that, so then you'll be able to maintain the entire course as a, uh, entire fee, uh, as a free of cost for the program, full program. So that's, I, I hope that answers your question. Um, the second question, um, Angel, what is the criteria to get 100% scholarship with VIT? Again, we have um, discussed, um, which is uh, from the country or territory, India, once we receive all the application based on the highest achieving uh, student, uh, we will have a committee to confirm who is that person and then we'll call upon that students to give that entire 100% um, scholarship for the entire course for that student. Yeah, th thanks for that, Mamun. Uh, yes. Appreciate that. Uh, probably the next question is uh, best suited for Alan. Uh, is VIT from Rakesh? Thank you for the question. Is VIT offering quarantine facilities for our offshore students? Uh, at the moment, we're not because we're still waiting for a timeline from the government with respect to borders opening. What's happening with a number of education facilities, education institutions, is there's discussions going on nationally with state governments and, and the national government about how we might be able to bring students in, whether we can utilise student accommodation in order to have them utilised as quarantine facilities. A number of proposals are under consideration and there'll be proposals which, um, if accepted, will be available to students from pretty much any institution who should choose to come to Australia. But what we've got to wait for is for those, um, those processes to be considered for the government to decide on a timeline about entry and then from there um, to approve uh, quarantine facilities on that basis. Uh, that will happen over the next few months, um, but it hasn't happened yet. But certainly you can, be, you can rest assured that when the borders are open so that students can come, there will be a very clear process um, and, and options around the issue of access to quarantine facilities to ensure that any student who seeks to come is properly treated and does have access to those, um, to those support services. Thank you, Alan. Uh, hope that answers uh, your question, Rakesh. You can speak out of that. Uh, Manish, in case of uh, remote learning, what is the maximum unit I can enroll? Well, Manish, you can, um, you can take the full load which is four units per a semester, if you're studying bachelor's or master's. Um, but 
to make it easy for you to transition from a, um, you know, online mode into face to face. Uh, I mean, you can take four, but probably we would recommend taking two, so that way you don't overburden yourself, especially being in India. Um, you know, probably this is from your family, etc. And once you go into Australia, you can always transition into two more subjects. But you can do four and fast track your studies. It's totally up to you. Uh, but the minimum is two. Hope that answers, Manish. Uh, Mandi, uh, I think this is a good question for Alan. When will the border be open? Yep. What is the status of international students coming to Australia to study? Uh, well, as I've as I've said, we the, the issue with the border opening for international students who are new students, it's going to be quite some time. Uh, the important point here is the Australian government's taken a very strong line on ensuring that we actually get control of coronavirus so that we don't have the long standing impacts to the economy that's occurring um, through other parts of the world. Uh, and we're, we're absolutely committed to that as a nation. Uh, and we believe that's not only in our nation's interest, but also in those people who come here to study uh, when they're able to access it. Um, the circumstances around some of the other countries we're talking about, I mean, some of those countries aren't allowing students in. Some of them are allowing students in, but they're actually locking down parts of their economy so that a student may well be able to get in, um, may well be able to study, but frankly, if they're relying on doing work, um, while they're studying, they're probably going to have not much to choose from. So again, it will take time. Uh, most speculation is around the second half of next year, uh, towards the end of the year. Um, but again, things are moving quickly. We have to wait and see whether more, vo more vaccines are, uh, again, approval, and then how quickly they can be rolled out, and therefore what that has to do with the overall burden of disease, and therefore what that means with respect to what governments are prepared to do with respect to opening borders. But I guess the, my point, as I said from the start, is if you start studying now, if, if, you, if, you, if you're chilling back at home with not much else to do, the circumstances are you can start studying now, um, access educational support, start actually completing units, and actually putting yourself into a situation where even though you haven't got here, you're actually qualifying for your Australian qualification. The status of international students coming to Australia to study, well, it's like any other visa, um, a, a visa recipient. Uh, you've, got, um, you've got to provide through the getting of that visa our guarantees around um, health insurance, et cetera. Now, I, th I think that's about as much as I can say at the moment. Oh, it's very tricky. The first part of the one is very easy. Um, I would say uh, the deduction is um, it will be 100% except your admin fee of $200. Um, yes, you can take your um, entire fees, uh, they refund it, and you need to apply for that with your supporting documents that you the refusal. But just say the scenario two, it could be you finished your um, semester because the, let's say the immigration taken longer time than usual. And by the time you have finished one or two subjects, um, you might even take that subject as a uh, the transcript. Um, in that case, we will charge you the full fees. But if you wanted to take the, the fees, if you've done the course or not done, it will be full refund, except the admin fee of $200 that we will, will remain um, to VIT. Um, that second part of the question that you ask, um, uh, can the student reapply? Um, yes, I, um, I would say yes, there is no um, restriction that you cannot, but we need to look at the reason for your initial uh, the refusal. If it is something that the, you have some sort of um, relevant strong ground to um, uh, overcome that refusal reason, then certainly we will be able to take that application. But in general uh, scenario, we will not encourage students to apply again if your um, you know, visa gets refused. I could give you a good example for that. If it's in case if a student um, you know, um, submitted an application um, and, and he has not given a sufficient financials uh, because you haven't had that one or you misplaced it or your agency forgot to upload it. And in that meanwhile, you got a refusal came because of that particular reason and that, but you have that sort of, uh, supporting documents to support it. And then if we see you have a strong ground, yes, in that case, we may uh, accept your application for the second round 
to proceed with that. Uh, and it, to be precise, in the last um, many years, I've seen, I can say, a handful of those cases that we have taken, and you know, we are successful, but majority of the cases, uh, if it is a general reason that your visa rejected, gets rejected, then we won't maybe encourage uh, to apply again at PIT. Thank you. Thanks, Mahmoud. And, and, and may I say, uh, Navi, why are we talking about refusals? Um, I don't see any reason why your visa would be refused. So if you proper all, if you have all the documentation in hand, and you meet all the requirements of PIT, uh, and you can go with a good agent that PIT has uh, plenty of people that are in this chat. So I, I don't see any reason to think about refusal. So let's be positive about it, and we are very confident that this is the case. Um, but, but then if it does happen, then we've got the answer. Okay, moving on. Uh, the next question is again from Navneet. There are two parts to that question. Uh, first part is uh, something I've let uh, Professor Arun to speak up. The second part is something I can uh, help you with, uh, uh, I'll finish that off. Will the college help the student with the accommodation? Um, we don't have accommodation on campus as such, but yes, definitely we can help you find accommodation. That's what uh, the question means. and. Uh, what is the cost of accommodation per week? Again, it's a very tricky one in the sense that it, it totally depends upon your lifestyle and your uh, requirements. Um, if you're willing to you know, share a room, it's obviously cheaper. If you want a room on your own, it's a bit more expensive. If you want a whole mansion, it's a lot more expensive. So it does come down to personal preference. But as a ballpark figure, I mean, don't quote me on it, but there are plenty of students who live you know, reasonably well for about $100 a week. Um, uh, and if you want really comfortable accommodation, you're probably looking at $200, $250 a week. And there are plenty of students from India that live for $100 a week that I know of. Um, Professor Arun, the first part of the question, are the internships paid or unpaid? And what's the wage rate for that? Or probably are the rate of this? Thank you. Thank you, Rohit. Um, with regard to internships, we don't um, make it compulsory for organizations or industry to, uh, for paid internships. It is voluntary. Um, however, there are incidences or there were incidences in the past where organizations or industries, uh, they have paid to our students. Now it depends on the, the project and it depends on the, the funding if they have. Um, the amount can be, you know, they have to pay, you know, standard uh, industry wage and, and project related. Sometimes they pay lump sum because it's a part of particular project, which is which is a funded project, and from that uh, amount they pay. But um, you know, in, in here in Australia, uh, the, the the requirement, the minimum wage payment is is uh, very strict uh, re regulations they follow. Now, um, however, students like to do internships even without in uh, you know uh, pay, uh, payment or unpaid internships because. They, they say that the experience we gain and access to uh, the industry is very important for us because we are not looking for a short term gain in terms of you know the, the the monetary benefits but that access that experience will give us you know in the future a, a full time permanent job and that is what you know long term gain so students are very happy and and even their unpaid internships because these industry people are spending a lot of time for, for our students and they are mentoring them, they are hand-holding them, they are helping them, they are giving access. So uh, unpaid uh, internships are, are also extremely popular everywhere in Australia. Thank you. Th thanks for that, uh, Professor Arun. Um, MBA program, Ashish Sharma is asking, MBA program, fresh graduates can apply, okay. Um, Ashish, yes, uh, our MBA is not an executive MBA. Uh, in that sense, you don't need to have work experience to apply for uh, our MBA program. As long as you have a valid bachelor's degree from any recognized Indian university, UGC recognized, as well as you have IL 6.5, you should be able to uh, gain uh, admission into our MBA program. So yes, it's definitely free from the fresh graduate. Uh, Ashish. Um, I think we are on time as well. And uh, if anyone has any other questions, please raise your hand. Okay, we go. If there are any questions about family work, uh, just send me some email. You can send us inquiries on inquiry at pit.edu.edu. As well as, I'd like to acknowledge um, our in country rep who recently joined us, uh, Anish. He's based out of Delhi and he's um, um, about to meet a lot of agents in 
Chandigarh and uh, Punjab Haryana acquired the region very soon. So please uh, extend your support to him as well as uh, he will be reaching out to all the students individually to answer your questions as well. And uh, I'm here normally to help you as well. So sir, uncertain times for the industry, but I'm sure working together we can achieve what we uh, want to know. Thank you so much. Mamun, any closing comments? No, thank you, uh, Rohit. Um, no, I think we pretty much covered everything. You are on time as well, which is good. Um, if there's no questions, um, as Rohit said, we have the uh, the, um, the country break from the north part. We have Anish Ahmed is there. He's uh, supporting the agency that are registered with VIT. And of course, um, overall support. Um, it is many agencies that I can see that I have joined today. You can reach out to Rohit um, as well as myself um, and, or Anish. Uh, if you have any questions uh, with the related to the students inquiries GTE, we're happy to assist any time. Um, so yeah, so and it's just um, we will provide yes, we can provide the PPT to our agencies if they need it um, and they we, they can use that for the presentation for their student. So that's all. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining this session. I'm sure uh, you'll be able to get some relevant information for your students. And for students, you will, um, I'm, I'm sure, have found some of the key information that Ellen and Arun um, uh, and myself and Rohit covered today um, to have your informed decision to take before you apply for your uh, uh, study at abroad. Um, do research take a note of what's happening around. Um, I think that is very, very important. Um, in, in Australia, we are in a better position than like some other country as a VIT, as a provider, what we offer, which is very, very competitive at the same time that we are in a situation to maintain the students' quality of education here in Australia for the last 20 years or so. So wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Um, happy Diwali. Uh, namaste. Bye-bye.